Hey, everybody. Welcome to another week of sessions here live from Shaper HQ in San Francisco. I am Noah, and to my right is Mr. Jake. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So today we are going to talk about French cleats. Um, so if you're kind of new to uh, the Shaper world, you won't have seen how uh, fanatic we are about uh, this, this type of modular storage system. But if you've been around, you'll have maybe seen the uh, Cleat of the Week from back in the day and uh, lots of good videos on Cleat builds. We like them. We like them a lot. Let's see, lots of them behind us. Um, so today, uh, I just want to kind of go through what a Cleat is, um, kind of what the, uh, the, the purposes that it can serve, how to design fixtures for Cleats. Um, and we're going to look at a couple different ways to do that. And uh, and then we're going to do a quick demo for you. And then mainly, I just want to do a, a big Q and A this week, guys, because you know cleats. The, the concept is not really all that uh, complex, but I think it's a really fun topic to talk about. Um, and so uh, we're just going to dive right in. I've got a couple slides for you as usual here. So go ahead and flip over to those. Ah, ah, sorry. So, and for our giveaway um, later on in the Q&A, uh, you're going to need to throw your name, I'm sorry, throw uh, hashtag ShaperMade in the chat, uh, not your name, hashtag ShaperMade, and Ted will gather your names up, and we will spin the wheel later on. Okay, now we can do slides. <laughs> okay, so um, cleats are a, a modular storage system, and they're based off of a... Uh, wedge cut at 45 degrees, um, or at least that's the, the degrees we normally will cut wedges at here at Shaper. Um, and it's essentially just a, a really reliable, strong, versatile way to hang stuff on a wall. Um, so you can go ahead and go to the first slide. Um, so you can see in profile that uh, we've got a couple things going on. We've got a wall or surface or a sheet of plywood of some kind. Um, that's the load bearing um, element of this setup. So the cleats are just little strips of material. Uh, we'll go over the dimensions in a second, but we commonly use uh, three-quarter plywood for our cleats, but you could use really anything that has a good amount of um, sort of load-bearing capability and good kind of mechanical properties for hardness. Um, that is fastened to the wall with normally screws, um, something that is going to have a lot of good resistance for pull-out because you, you are loading those up can, it can be quite extreme. Um, if you make a big you know, hanger for heavy clamps or something like that, it can put a lot of force uh, on the wall. So you want to be careful about making sure you hit a stud in the back or that, you, you know, that you're confident that the cleat isn't going to pull out of the wall. So uh, that's the, the wall and the cleat. And then the, the part that moves around, the sort of utility part, the cleat thing, the cleat fixture of, of many varieties, interfaces with that um, cleat hanging on the wall, uh, and it just essentially hooks down over uh, and slides in and sort of nests in. You can see up uh, on the top side of that where those two 45 degree opposing 45 degree angles meet. Um, that is what's doing all the holding, uh, more or less. So um, that's that's kind of the basic idea. We can go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, so this is by no means. Uh, the end all be all cleat dimension. This just happens to be what we've found to be pretty good at Shaper and what we've generally tried to design our cleats around. So feel free to uh, throw these dimensions out the window and do your own thing if you find something that works better for you. And that's really the goal of today's uh, session, honestly, is cleats are super versatile and super personal. And uh, you should just be trying to aim at whatever uh, floats your boat, whatever works for your particular situation. Um, so, and we'll get into how we generally make these strips um, later on, but we've got a couple of little tricks for uh, making kind of quick work of cutting these cleats and saving on material. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the slideshow. So uses, man, so many, it's sort of unlimited. It's only, only limited by your sort of creativity uh, basically, for every problem, there is a cleat solution. Probably not, but uh, kind of seems that way. Uh, shelves, sort of 
custom holders for screwdrivers and pliers and router bits and sustainers and clamps and drills, sort of anything that you've got in your shop. Uh, at, at Chaper, we kind of have a, a little bit of a, a tendency to dislike drawers. It's, it's hard to find stuff in them if you don't have them well organized. And uh, the wall is lovely. You just sort of lay everything out on it and you don't have to go looking for anything. It's just sort of all there and you can keep things sort of organized in, in categories on the wall, even if you're, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, so how do we get cleat profiles? So um, as I said, we really like cleats and that's rubbed off on the uh, community. So in addition to the cleats that are uh, designed by Shaper on Shaper Hub, there are quite a few uh, from the community, some really cool ones and quite a few shaper designed cleats as well. Um, and this, I think, should just be a starting point for everybody uh, to just get on Shaper Hub and look at what everybody else has been doing. Um, it's, it's a really cool uh, kind of way to organize. So lots of people take to it. And uh, hopefully you will as well. And anything that you create, you should also post up and share on Shaper Hub uh, so that you can help out your, your amigos. OK, uh, next slide. So a couple ways to go about designing a cleat. Uh, this is a, uh, a design that is on Shaper Hub already. But you can see that it is a design that was created in Adobe Illustrator. Um, and it is a uh, fairly simple thing to make. One thing that I wanted to talk about just briefly in the design of cleats is just uh, looking at kind of, you know, cleats are a utilitarian thing. So a lot of the joinery that we do on them is fairly utilitarian. So in this particular case, it's a half lap joint. So, and I'll show you, uh, maybe we can just switch to my camera quickly, Eric. So what that sort of ends up looking like in person is a joint like that. So you can see we just rabbited out the end of that vertical piece on the cleat and didn't have to do anything to uh, the top component and just glue that guy in and you know I think in some cases we'll toss a couple pin nails in there while the glue is setting uh, you know that these don't really have to be pretty um, they're really here just for utility uh, so this half lap method is really nice it's very strong um, if you're doing it in the sort of vertical direction so that you're fighting gravity there um, and then the other thing that we'll, we'll show you is, is just kind of a really simple mortise and tenon with dog bones um, and Jake will show you how to get that done on tool so we can Flip back to the slideshow, uh, on to the next one. So we have updated, and uh, we'll go ahead and share the link out for this, but in our French cleat system um, project on Shaper Hub, we actually have this, uh, we recently added this little uh, cleat profile. So this is this is matching that two and a quarter cleat dimension that we, that we put up earlier. Um, but this is, on a, this is just a little module essentially that you can place on anything. Um, so we're going to show you how to do this with uh, on tool design tools plus this little cleat profile that you can grab on Shaper Hub and just add to your account. So it should be really easy for you to get going on this and just kind of be creative and play with it. Um, and we'll show you how to use this file also. So uh, let's see, I think we'll go ahead and go to the last slide, which is just quick tips, tricks. As I said, we'll talk a little bit about cutting cleats. Um, one thing that is uh, can be a downside of, of cleats is that they are not fastened to the wall, right? They are hanging on the wall. Um, and so there's nothing to stop them from lifting up and out of their uh, little hook area, um, unless you put something there. So we've got a couple of different solutions to that. Um, my favorite one, and one I don't actually have in front of me, um, but is on Shaper Hub, is uh, the cam solution. So it's this little lever that you can machine with Origin that's a little cam lever that sticks in on the underside of the cleat and locks the cleat to the bottom of, or it locks your fixture to the bottom of the cleat that's fastened, fastened to the wall. Um, but there's a couple of other options, and I do actually have them in my hand, so you can go ahead and cut to me. So I've got these little neoprene, so it's pretty hard neoprene, but neoprene tubing, and we've got a link to that. So that's three quarter in dia inch in diameter, and that's what that profile that we have was designed for. So this is going to go ahead and slot. If it's this is confusing, I'm sure, but it'll become clear. It's going to slot 
right in on the bottom of this cleat so that it's stopping the cleat from being able to lift up and off of its top bevel, right? So if you put something in the bottom here, it's essentially locking things in. It's nice about the neoprene is it's compliant. So um, when you're cutting cleats on the table saw, chances are that your width is going to vary a little bit. So it's nice to have something that'll sort of um, deal with a little bit of variability in the, in the thickness or rather the width of your cleats that you have mounted on the wall. But if you don't have the neoprene around, a three quarter piece of hardwood dowel will also do the trick. Um, so you can see, same idea. And then the cam also rests in this slot, but it's, uh, it's an off center lever. So as you rotate it, this height changes. So it sort of clamps almost rather than just uh, as a stopper. So um, we can go ahead and go back to that tips and tricks slide. Um, so that rubber tube, like I said, we'll post a link up to it. I think the neoprene is a, a pretty nice solution. If you don't want to machine a bunch of those little cams, the neoprene is really quick. You can just slice a little bit off the end of the tube and uh, you'll be in business. So uh, cutting on the table saw, um, we, as I said, generally use three quarter plywood. Um, and what we'll do is we'll take a straight section rip uh, three and three quarters inch wide. Um, and we'll rip a bunch of those in uh, in a sort of session. And then we'll reset the blade to 45 degrees bevel. Um, and we'll reset the fence to an inch and a half um, off of zero. And we'll just do a little test cut. And that should line you up to uh, the two and a quarter width, I believe. Hopefully my math is right here. Um, but uh, like I said, if there's any variability in your cleats, you may want to double check that number just uh, do a little test cut on the end of one of the boards and, and reset it if it doesn't measure equidistant. Like I said, you know, a lot of these methods will have some amount of uh, tolerance for, for error in there. Don't worry about it too much. The one thing that you should be really careful about on the table saw is um, because you have set a bevel angle, if you lift the board up, it will actually be moving uh, the width of your cleat because of that 45 degree angle. So if the, the, the board raises for some reason, you know, sort of naturally wants to raise sometimes, it can uh, cause your uh, straight line to turn into a wiggly waving line. So we have, um, we'll often use uh, a feather board or some other method uh, for keeping some pressure applied to the top edge or top face rather of the, um, the board as we're feeding it through the saw just to keep that line good and straight. Um, the only other tips uh, that we have on cleats is, is just generally trying to spread out your points of contact. And I'll, I can talk a little bit more about that uh, if you want to switch over to the camera here. Um, so we've got a few different cleats here. Um, this one here for holding on to clamps is actually pretty unstable. This is it. This is one I designed, so I'm not trying to dig <laughs> on anybody. Um, but um, and it's unstable because the, the two cleat profiles are actually on the ends of either of these boards. I might be able to lift this guy off and you can see it. All right, so it's pretty narrow. So it likes to move around. Now, I've never had it fall off and bust my toe, and I don't think anybody else has, but it doesn't feel great. So it would have been better in that design to widen everything out and just allow for a little bit wider um, points of purchase for, for stability, you know, something like uh, this tape rack or the hammer rack over there is a lot more stable. Um, it's just, it's on there. So it's, it's really tough to move it around because uh, it's, it's just a, uh, a more stable design with the legs or the hooks out wider. So try and try and play with that and kind of know the limits of uh, what you're hanging, how much weight you're going to be hanging on it. And, uh, you know, like I said, don't be afraid to fail. Those those cleat uh, hangers or the clamp hangers rather are okay. Um, could be better, but they they work, and we've been using them for years. So uh, you know, it it might be fine. Might be good enough. <laughs> um, so I want to hand it over now to Jake. So he's going to talk a little bit about um, his his favorite cleats. I think there's a couple of other ones on the wall. Some other little tasty tidbits, and then we're going to get into. Uh, how to design cleat on tool. Over to Jake. Hey everyone. All right, one of my favorite ones, um, mainly because it just 
be, it fits so nicely is actually the one that Noah showed uh, on the Illustrator file. You may have noticed in that file there are little circles on the uh, on the design right here where the where the chisel fits. What that's specifically for is that taper on the uh, thank you on the the neck of the chisel. It's a circle that when you switch over to one of these, we call them unicorn bits, but they're basically a long tapered um, ball end mill, sorry, ball, ball nose bit. And it gives you, oh, there we go. Boom. And it gives you, wrong one. There it is. It's super subtle, but just a single pass with that little bit of a taper matches up just beautifully with that. And it's nice and secure. It's not going to pop out. Anything like that, you have to lift up slightly and then out. So that's one of my favorites, just because it feels right. Um, and then, of course, this. <laughs> oh, the old never, McMaster never catalog. Caught without it. <laughs> I take it with me everywhere. Um, but really, it's this this style of of cleat box that I like a lot. You can make this any size. For example, in my house, I have a whole series of cleats. And all my records are held in a box like this, and it sits nice and flush against the wall. And you can make it any size you want. Just do the long straight cuts on a table saw, whatever, come up with your origin, make a grid, pop that cleat profile that you have on Shaper Hub right there, and you'll be able to make a nice record box or bookshelf or whatever it may be. Same thing, same style on the, um, the saw blade holder. Okay. You're but show off your sweet little dado. dado oh yeah, there, I am pretty. I love this thing. <laughs> Got all my dado blades, and then these guys try to keep it as safe as possible. Normally, it's low to the ground, um, but I have a problem right now. I have a whole bunch of I have a whole bunch of pliers, and they've just been strewn about, and I need to organize them. But all I have in my shaper hub at the moment is that cleat profile. So I need to build something using just onto a CAD that's going to work with this. And it's going to be simple, but it's going to get the job done. I've already had and done, gone ahead and done one side of it. We're going to do the opposing side and I'll teach you a couple tricks along the way. It might be worth just taking a quick look at, uh, at the done side yeah. on that camera before you uh, dive in. So this is only this is one side. Again, super simple design. Got a piece of plywood that I'm going to drape my um, pliers over. And we've done a, a mortise for essentially what we're treating this as a tenon. And there's that cleat profile that we're talking about. All of this section, even the dog bones, is all done on tool. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Doo -doo -doo. All right. So I already have my workspace scanned in, but I created a grid. If I zoom out, you'll see I created a grid down here in the bottom left. So I want to make a new grid on the bottom right, which I'm so happy that I can do. Come over. You all know the drill. Boom. Boom. And sneak around the corner here on the right side. Hop into my import. We've got the French cleat system, and there it is. It may look kind of funky at first because it's got that two sides, but that's uh, we designed it that way so that it's a closed shape, and then you can kind of lead the cut out. So I'm going to line it up with my outside edge of my material. And so, it, as you can see now, it leaves me with just that cleat profile. Yeah, so if you take a look, um, there's a, a center line, and that center line, um, can be lined up with either the uh, bottom or top of your top center of your material. So you're, you can see Jake's selecting uh, the anchor point for top center right now. Um, and that's important. You want to either do the, the bottom center, top center, or center center. But going anywhere else is going to be problematic because with that center line is lined up exactly with where the cleat should land on the edge of your material. Um, the rest of that profile is just uh, sort of a starting and stopping point. Yep. So 
if I, I, but before I place this, you may wonder, because I need to do opposing sides, right? Because they're blind tenons. I can go ahead and fli uh, what is it? flip this directly on tool by going to scale. I'm going to unlink those two dimensions. I'm just going to turn my width because I want to flip it this way. I'm going to turn that to negative. Boom. Flips it right on its center axis. And if I, that's how I did this side. But I'm going to flip that back because I'm going to place it on this side. It's a pretty nifty little trick there, guys, to, to stick in your back pocket if you ever need to mirror something. And you can do that for either dimension, um, both horizontal or vertical. You can, you can flip to your heart's content without going back to your computer. Yep. Have that be an inside cut. As you can see, that's, that's my 45 that's going to match up with my cleat on my wall. Go we'll hop back into design, and we're going to create a rectangle to go around this situation. Let's say four and a half by five inches. I want to give it a little bit of a corner radius to make it uh, hand friendly, elbow friendly. There we are. I'm going to also grab my bottom left. Bottom left? Actually, top left. And there we go. See, I'm lining up with the top of my design. So that's the body of my fixture now. And I'm going to create the mortise doing the same thing with using half inch plywood, which never actually turns out to be half inch. But I know it's about 4.87 or 0.487, the height of four inches. No corner radius for right now. I'm just going to drop that at two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Does that look right? Looks right to me. Just give everything a quick glance over, make sure they look the same. They don't. Anyways. Ah, I see the problem now. Okay. Pardon me. I need to scoot that guy over just a little bit. So 0 0.487, four inches, center. There we go. That's looking better. And that's my inside cut. Last thing that we're going to create on tool is our dog bones. So I got a quarter inch cutter. We're going to make a quarter inch circle, turn my grid off so I can move a little bit more freely. And I'm really just lining it up because a dog bone allows me to fit a square edge in there. Again, it's not the prettiest thing, but it is very effective. And it just takes, whoop, there we go. And since I've already created it, I can grab it again, copy, and drop it right there. Copy one more time. There. And uh, for those of you that, that aren't familiar with what uh, dog bone is, Jake is relieving the, the corners because when you come through. Oh. So for, for those of you that aren't familiar with what a dog bone is, um, Jake is relieving the corners uh, because when you when you come through with a, a an end mill or a router bit, uh, inside corners are always going to have a radius, and that radius is going to be that of the the cutter you know, that you're using. So uh, in this case, since it's for utility, we don't mind just sort of enlarging those corners a little bit so that a square piece of material will fit. Uh, that's really what's going on here is we're just making room for the square corners on that cross, cross piece of plywood that Jake has. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this. I'm going to do this only a quarter inch deep, and the rest is half inch. And we will pop this together. All right. So um, while Jake is cutting, That circle in the center, that large white circle, is the corrective range for origin. 
And as long as Jake keeps the line he's cutting on inside of that circle, the machine is actually able to correct for Jake's error. So about a quarter inch in any direction that it can correct. You can see as, as he's plunging and moving around, you can watch the spindle in the bottom part of that camera, um, the, the router spindle, actually move around uh, and help keep uh, the cutter on the line that, that Jake is, is cutting on rather than sort of moving all over the place with the body of the machine. That's, it's going to get a nice straight line. Um, beyond that, Jake is just doing a series of passes here, so a rough and finish passes. And now he is just quickly opening up the corners so that his square material will fit. Be a pretty straightforward one here. Um, and these dog bones can sort of come in all shapes and sizes. And actually, if you don't like the look of them, uh, a quick way to get around that is actually um, round over the material that you're going to be putting in to that slot. So um, in this case, Jake's using a quarter inch cutter. So he would be using a 1 8 inch round over bit. You can just get a bearing follower round over bit in a trim router and round over that piece of plywood on the long sides. Um, and, uh, you know, it may not match up perfectly because the, the radius on your cutter and the radius on your uh, round over bit may not be exact, but uh, it's certainly a lot less noticeable than dog bones. Dog bones are kind of pure utility. They're, you know, they're, their beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but uh, a lot of people really dislike the way those look and, um, and try and kind of come up with other clever ways to either hide the relief or eliminate it altogether. So here Jake's coming around the bend, and uh, I think he's going to do uh, one more pass here. Um, so that's down to, uh, or actually he'll have a couple passes. That's uh, his finishing pass. Uh, I'm sorry, rough pass at final depth, so half inch for this half inch plywood. Um, so he's going to cut that little bit of cleat. One thing to look out for, um, and it, this piece is pretty big that Jake pulled out, but as you're as you're kind of doing a last depth pass on smaller pieces where you're creating a little bit of debris, really look out for that debris getting caught up um, inside the uh, kind of inner workings down where, where the cutting's going on. Um, the vacuum has a tendency of pulling up little pieces and getting them stuck. Uh, and it can cause some chaos. It can cause things to jump occasionally. So I really like to, especially for smaller pieces where I really think that it's going to be a problem, I'll not cut all the way through, just leaving a little skin on the bottom. And then before I do my final or my final pass, I'll just come through with like a screwdriver or, or the back of a wrench or something and pop that little piece out so that I know I'm not going to be encountering any surprise situations. You know, in, in, in working with power tools, we always want to be uh, one step ahead of, of the situations, you know, making sure that we're not... Uh, we're not taken by surprise by anything. Surprises are dangerous. So. so Jake's just taking his final pass here. You can see he's skipping some of these paths. Um, and, and that's because he's set up right on the edge. And he's overcutting from his design. Um, so he's, in this case, for, for on -tool CAD, you know, you're kind of trying to make, uh, make the most out of the tools that are on Origin. And so sometimes, like for instance, uh, what Jake's doing here with the rounded, rounded rectangle, um, the rounded rectangle tool on Origin is going to round all four, four corners of the rectangle. You don't necessarily have to lay that uh, design down um, on the piece of wood with all four corners uh, touching. You can see that leaves, because it was overhanging in the back, um, it leaves sharp edges on the back side. So uh, Jake is going to test fit that guy, but uh, he may... Is that, is that right? Okay. He's going to say... As long as it's still taped down and the shaper tape is still on there, uh, things are not final. He can always make a decision to open that profile up a little bit using offsets, using negative offsets. Yeah, it's giving me just just enough squeeze to where I know it's going to be a friction, nice friction fit. I would just throw a little bit of glue in there and hammer that together. But since we're just trying to... Jake's, Jake's favorite tool there. Oh yeah, you're going to evangelize especially, your tool. Especially, well, I do every time. I feel like people are getting sick of hearing it. <laughs> the special spatula. Don't touch a spatula. Be surprised how many people try to steal my spatula. All right. Da -da -da. 
You know, the real trick is these aren't that sharp when you buy them. Take it to the grinding wheel, and it is perfect for taking off shaper tape, double-sided tape, and for getting under these pieces that are a little more, eggs. more stubborn. Yeah, flipping eggs, <laughs> cutting open boxes. Really, all you need. All right, so there we go. On tool, everything on tool, minus the cleat profile. So let's hammer it together. Make sure I do this correctly. Here we go. Hi. All right. <laughs> Just a light tap. Just uh, casually pulling the hammer off the cleat back off there. The hammer Just, cleat. All right. Just saying. There it is. It's simple, but. Effective. Just, just pointing out that, uh, see how quick it is to move things around on the wall? What yep. if that had been screwed down? Then where, then where would you be? Are you tired uh, of hearing me talk about how I like cleats yet? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did choose these based on their colors to get nice aesthetically pleasing. There we go. Look at that. Shop organized. Thing of beauty. Okay, um, Jake, have you got anything else that you want to uh, talk about? <sighs> Cleats aren't just for your workshop. They can also be for your home. As I pointed out earlier, you can have uh, very aesthetically pleasing cleats in your entertainment system, or around your entertainment system. Um, yeah, go forth and prosper. Make some fun cleats. Yeah, and share them with the community. You know, I, I think that, uh, that that cleats are one thing where you shouldn't really be scared to share, shouldn't be shy. Um, you know, there's lots of amazing ideas out there, and and even if you're just taking one of those and tinkering with it, um, you know, making your own version. Uh, I think it's it's one thing that everybody can really appreciate uh, who has a cleat wall in their shop. Um, it's just such an easy way to get organized. Uh, and a really good origin project because uh, it's so quick and easy as you saw to just make all sorts of different different profiles and, and you can go crazy. You can make them as simple or as complex as your heart desires. So uh, this is this is a quick one today, guys. So and, and I think the reason for that is that cleats are fairly a, a fairly simple concept, uh, but uh, you know obviously they can take on so many different shapes and forms. Thank you very much for watching our quick segment on cleats today. We will catch you next time.